I am delivering this statement on behalf of uh, HE President-elect Adam Obaro. A government is recognized by states and peoples in Africa today because of constitutional legitimacy. The constitution of the Gambia states that the authority to govern in the Gambia must be derived from the votes cast by the Gambian people. On the 1st December 2016, the sovereign Gambian people had their say. On 2nd December 2016, the IEC gave its verdict. All the contestants agreed that I am the chosen president of the Republic of the Gambia. The decision of the incumbent to change his earlier decision, to accept the results and ensure smooth and peaceful handover of executive power came by surprise. His decision to reject the results has given rise to national and international reaction against his change of heart. My position as president-elect and that of coalition 2016 is clear. Section 63, subsection 2 of the Constitution orders that I assume office on the day the term of office of outgoing President Jame expires. He assumed office on 19 January 2012. His term expires in January 2017 after serving five years as provided by the Constitution. We therefore hold that Outgoing President Jame is the lawful president of the Gambia until his term expires in January 2017. On the day his term expires, my term as the lawful president of the Gambia begins. This is the law of the land. My status as incoming president has unquestionable constitutional legitimacy. I am therefore preparing to assume office after outgoing President Jammeh's term expires in January and the team for the inauguration is at work. This is what I told the Gambian people in particular and the international community at large. Today, I wish to take this opportunity to inform the nation that the constitutional legitimacy of my status as an incoming president has been endorsed at home and abroad. At home, civil society groups in large numbers are endorsing the results of the elections and are calling on the incumbent not to obstruct the smooth transfer of executive power. They are the Gambia Bar Association, Medical and Dental Association of the Gambia, Gambia Labor Congress, Institute for Human Rights and Development in Africa, Initiative for the Promotion of Democracy and Good Governance, Gambia National Trade Union Congress, Gambia Press Union, University of the Gambia Faculty and Staff Association, Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry, National Youth Council, National Youth Parliament, Gambia Association of Public Health Officers, Civil Society Coalition on Elections, the Association of Non-Governmental Organization, Female Lawyers Association, Music, Musicians Union of the Gambia, Gambia Association of Music Producers and Promoters, African Center for Democracy and Human Rights Studies, National Association of Gambian Nurses and Midwives, and Think Young Women. The list continues to grow. By the day to confirm the resolution of Gambians in ensuring that the democratic process and outcome are not derailed by undemocratic means. These initiatives have confirmed the internal legitimacy of my incoming presidency. Those who do not 
understand would also not understand the national duty that is being performed by Gambians. And they must be thanked even though they do not want to be thanked. I must commend them for defending the constitution and the sovereignty of the people. Externally, the ECOWAS heads of state deployed a high level mission of heads of state to the Gambia on 13 December 2016 to review the political situation with all the stakeholders. The delegation comprised Her Excellency Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, President of the Liberia and Chairperson of the Authority, H.E. Mohamed Buhari, President of Nigeria, H.E. Ernest Bai Koroma, President of Sierra Leone, and H.E. John Dramani Mahama, President of Ghana. They are now calling on the outgoing President Jammi to accept the results of the polls and refrain from any action likely to compromise the transition and peaceful transfer of power to me as president-elect. They are also calling for my safety and protection to be guaranteed as requested by the coalition. They also concord with the coalition's position that I should be sworn in on the day the term of office of the outgoing president expires in conformity with the constitution of the Gambia. And they have promised to grace the occasion in their numbers. In pursuance of peace and reconciliation, they selected a duo to mediate. His Excellency Muhammad Buhari, President and Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, will serve as mediator in the Gambia. And His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, President of the Republic of Ghana, shall serve as co-chair. They also requested for the AU and the United Nations to endorse all decisions made and are invited to collaborate to implement them. Prior to this landmark initiative by the head of state of ECOWAS, I did receive endorsement from the president of the ECOWAS Commission the chairperson of the AU Commission, special representative of the United Nations Secretary General to West Africa and the Sahel, high representative of the European Union for Foreign Affairs and Secu Security Policy, and vice president of the European Commission, Federica Mogherini, EU Commissioner for International Cooperation and Development, and Neven. Mimika, President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, Chair of the ECOWAS Authority of Heads of State and Government, UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon, Senegal's Minister of Foreign Affairs Malkur Njai, US State Department, West African Civil Society Forum. The list keeps on increasing to confirm the external legitimacy of my status as President elect. In the spirit of national reconciliation, I still wish to call on outgoing President Jammeh to accept his status in good faith and facilitate the smooth transfer of executive power. This is what is in line with the national interests which he has sworn to uphold and defend under the Constitution. In the letter and spirit of our national anthem, Gambians want to live in unity, freedom, and peace each day. For their sake, let the doors be opened to ensure a peaceful transfer of executive power.